Hello? Hey, it's working. Can everybody hear me? Okay, um, so I'll just open up this one, right? Yes? It's on. Oh my goodness. Okay. So uh, this was on Friday in Madrid and uh, it was part of an Ashoka uh, project. And maybe I should just start by introducing Ashoka for those of you who don't know. Does everybody know what Ashoka? Those who don't know? Okay. Okay. So Ashoka is a network of social entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite an honor to, to be uh, invited into Ashoka and it's very much an individual level. So. It's not uh, like, yeah, we, we can all benefit from, from that network, but it was actually Ole is an Ashoka fellow. And then, uh, and then you know, you get uh, access to a large community of, of social entrepreneurs and, and good ideas and, and people who think new uh, thoughts. Yeah, so we were invited to, to something called uh, Longevity Globalizer. And, and honestly, I wasn't 100% sure what longevity means. Or, or why it's interesting to cycling without age. I don't know if you, if you know that feeling, because longevity is sort of a buzzword right now. A lot of people are talking about it. And, and my prejudice is actually that longevity is, is like really crazy rich people who can afford to, to live to 120 or 130, um, you know, and then they'll be the only ones or whatever. They'll survive uh, for, uh, without thinking about other people or something like that. And of course that's not, what we want. That's not what we need. Anyway, so I found out that, of course, Ashoka being, you know, more visionary, thinking ahead, longevity is thinking about now that we are growing older, how will we, you know, spend those years? Um, what are the consequences to, to society? What are the differences in different societies um, in how we grow old? How do we talk about it? So it's, it's a huge, it's, it is absolutely massive. Um, so I was with these people and they're all social entrepreneurs and, and, and talking for, for three days. So I'm a, I'm a little bit like my mind is a little bit overwhelmed and, I, and it's a new topic as well. I talk a lot about cycling without age and, and I love talking about cycling without age, but, but this is actually something different. So um, excuse me if I'm not 100%, you know, I'm experimenting on you actually a little bit right now. It's a new topic. Um, but let me actually start by um, asking you if you know what, since now we're in Denmark, a little bit of, of, of history, um, if you know how the Vikings would, um, what is the hardest punishment in the Viking community? I don't know if anybody knows what that was. Yes, isolation. Uh, it's called forvisning uh, in Danish, or it could be, that's one of the words that you can use, and I tried to find the exact word in English. Expulsion, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, so you would send them off. And then I think it's really inspiring just when you think about like how their community was built. It looks, it looks, it's a village, right? And then you have, you know, your activities within the village and you have certain roles and you have all ages. Um, and imagine being sent off and not being welcome. It's absolutely horrifying and yeah, it's death. You know, you can't live without your community. So I just want to, to give you that image before we dive in to some more, yeah, not 100% not, not sure that there's too much text in, this, in these slides because there's, there are so many thoughts. Um, but we have been working uh, throughout this program on finding out what uh, root causes to a big issue and what are the consequences of this big issue. And that, then that in itself is completely impossible because everything is connected. Um, so you try to take something out and then you look at it. Um, but we all know that there is a huge problem with social isolation and loneliness. And even that, you know, those are different things. People might voluntarily, you know, be on their own and then you choose to go into community or you can feel isolated amongst other people and, and so on. So we, we, we also have to, to, to know, you know, what exactly are we talking about? But uh, there's no doubt anymore. Unfortunately, uh, the US Surgeon General calls it an epidemic of social isolation and loneliness. The WHO has just made a, a commission on, on social connectedness um, and, and it's a global phenomenon. 
Um, we know, for instance, from, from Susan Pinker and from, from others, that uh, relationships, uh, social connectedness is important and we live longer. Um, we also have, like, there's a difference between having a lot of connections and then having few quality relationships. So what I try to, uh, to, to, to exp like, talk about, uh, investigate throughout this project was if we in cycling without age, and I don't know what everybody is doing yet, um, very curious, uh, all, both look at numbers in terms of how many rides, do we also talk about or look at the quality of the relationships that are formed? Um, because I, I definitely feel like sometimes when we have to sort of pitch and talk about cycling without age that it's nice to say a lot of numbers. It's very impressive and it is, you know, absolutely important because we know that, that, that both quantity and, and quality of relationships is important. Besides that, there are so many other benefits to doing cycling without age, the stimulation and the physical thing and, and, and uh, bicycling advocacy and so many things. So, but right now, I'm just talking about the quality of the relationships and how we can maybe um, be part of a solution to a systemic problem. Uh, I can't see... Oh, cool. All right. So, um, what we did was that the big problem was uh, that people, they feel lonely and socially isolated. And then there were a lot of consequences. I want to go to this one. Yeah. So that's the exercise. And maybe you want to do it yourselves. Um, and it doesn't have to be social isolation. It's a good exercise if you have any kind of issue that you find like, this is important, we have to do something about it in the world, but where do I begin? It's impossible, and everything is interconnected. Then for me, like a mental exercise is to break it down. Okay, what do we have? Um, and this is what we came up with. Um, and one of, one of the things that, that is actually also uh, fascinating, I think, do we even understand, you know, do we understand how important social relationships are? Because it is one of the things that we find difficult to measure. Maybe we, we can't, or we, maybe we're not supposed to measure. I don't know. But, but who knows what it is like when you feel close to someone or you feel that kind of, uh, re, it's called resonance in Danish, re, resonance? Yes, that there is something going on. It's impossible, isn't it, to say what exactly is it that makes you feel comfortable in the company of one person, and a little bit maybe indifferent in the company of another person. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a mystery, and I think we take it for granted, we don't value it enough, and we might uh, be losing something very valuable. Um, there is, of course, you know, talking about how we live our lives, a, a lot of work, uh, stressful jobs, um, away from, you know, community, away from people, in front of a screen, uh, will also, of course, you know, decrease our chances of, of, of connecting with other people. We also, uh, many of us, live very, very far away from, from where we go to work or, or where we have, you know, maybe even the hospital or where we shop. And so, so we might um, have to drive. Uh, and that is, you know, we are reducing our opportunities to, to meet other people on a daily basis. And it's happening in front of our eyes. And and it's an absolute uh, nightmare to having social relationships. Oh, I wasn't fast enough. Is it there? Yes. So what, uh, <clears throat> what Ashoka does, and this is a little bit overwhelming, it is like, okay, so now you know what the system is, like what, how things are interconnected, so now you go and change it. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much what I need your help to do if you, if you want to, if you, if you believe in this, if you agree with these issues, we actually have to, to try to change the system, if it's even possible. Um, so it's something like uh, finding out exactly, you know, what is a quality uh, relationship? How does it happen in cycling without age? How do we measure it? Uh, if, if, if we should do that, um, and... and uh, and start uh, somehow um, making it part of, of your operations, if, if you believe in it. You know, think about, like, when did people connect? It could also be something 
as simple as, as thinking more in terms of neighbors and family members, existing community being allowed. I think for a while, a, a way back, I, I personally was very inspired by the idea that it's a stranger doing something good for a stranger. But when I think about it, I don't, I don't actually think that that's necessary because you, you still, people might not be able to do something good for those people that already exist in their, in their you know, lives already. So to, 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 to take care of those relationships that already exist, I think is very important. Um, we, we also talked about um, something like the 15-minute city, and I know that it's a very controversial topic, actually, so you might, individually, you might have some ideas about what uh, the challenges is with that. Um, but from where I'm coming from, and, and, and I think it can be used for different things, is defini definitely, first of all, uh, I think reducing the, the, the amount of cars that we have um, in our local communities is a good idea to meet and to have just less pollution and more uh, connectedness. Um, but, but it's also a way to make sure that, that you know the people around you uh, so we don't keep like <clears throat> taking resources out of local communities. Um, I also believe that the amount of time, the, the, the digitalization of, of our, our world, of course, is, is a big um, problem when it comes to, uh, to social relations and, and social media and so on will we'll take away our, our attention. But, and, and, and I wanted to start there, actually. I was like, we have to do something about that. But then I, I actually don't know if Cycling Without Age is the right tool to do anything about it. And that's what also part of the exercise, which if you want to do this, um, you could, of course, take these ideas and make your own as well, is that we might not be able to change the whole system or the most important parts of the system, but we can work where, where we are already good. And, um, and, and, and that's how I, I chose it. Like, we cannot um, it, prevent people from, from driving far away to go to work, thus, you know, leaving maybe a, a local community or, or even, you know, live, live far away in another country and so on. Um, but we, and we might not be able to do something about the work schedules, but where can we make a difference? And that is, you know, first of all, fully understanding the importance of quality human relationships and, and, and building them, help build them. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, again, I'm going to send them to you um, several ideas on, on how to, uh, to be a little more creative and, and, and also to maybe use cycling without age for something uh, in collaboration with other existing nonprofits who also know, like they might be experts in their own community uh, and working with uh, organizations that are trying to, to make their local setting much stronger, um, especially like something like caregivers um, is also something that people are talking a lot about right now, is, uh, is an important group of people that we need to really, really help and, and help support. Yeah. A lot of information on, you know, especially when it comes to measurement. Um, it's something that, 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 you know, everybody's probably asking you always, so what, what difference do you make and so on. Um, and, and, and I think it's an important thing to, to try to turn it around and say, like, we, we, will, we will tell you what's important. You know, people might be saying, oh, but how many people? And then we go and try to find all of those numbers, but, but maybe we should be a little more confident and, and say, you know, well, Actually, it's more relevant to talk about the quality of the relationships, and that way we, we help shift mind, mindsets. So this was like before. This was what we did for, 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 for a half, half a year, all of the discussions and so on, very focused on cycling without age. And what I'm getting to now is what all of those different, different social entrepreneurs, they, they, their ideas was sort of the conclusion was, you know, uh, this is what it was, this is what it has been, and, and we should be going in this direction. And that was presented at the summit in Madrid where, where I was, and we were talking about it on Friday. And that was so fascinating, it was interesting. We had been sitting separately in our own little teams and, and done the homework and done exactly what they asked us. And then we came down there, and, and, and that bunch of people, like, they were not happy with not all of them, but we had discussions about wh why this exercise, why that question, and so, and, and so we completely 
tore everything apart that, that, that everybody had been working on because people were very critical. They also said, we cannot talk about uh, aging as if it is something that is the same all over the world. It'll be different in different countries. Uh, the demography in one country will be completely different, for, for instance, in a lot of uh, places in the global south. You have younger population, and then you have some countries where the population is much, much older. So you, just uh, the way that also, you know, how we talk about it. We had a long discussion, which you know this discussion. Is it called older adults, elders, elderly people, old, and so on? It, it is important. But it's impossible, like we will never ever be able to, to conclude on, on anything. The discussion in itself is also important. They also had a lot of these social entrepreneurs, they said, well, everything is in English. And, and, and the language shapes our uh, understanding of the world. Um, so it's actually a little bit difficult. There were a lot of really cool Brazilians, in very vocal. And they said, you know, we, it's, not even, it's not our language, it's not our reality. So. So keep that in mind. Makes it a little bit difficult to, to come home with like a toolkit. Okay, this is the right thing. But I'm going to give you a lot of questions. Um, it's okay. So these were sort of. Have you have you have you just looked at it? Like, does it? What 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 are you? Can you see, Christine? Can you see over there? Um. So it's very much like, for instance, something like old age is far away. It's not like it's not going to happen to me. It's, it's in a long time. Um, I think that probably makes sense to a lot of us. We're talking about old people, older people and older adults. Like it doesn't affect us. Um, rather than saying that, um, yeah, you, 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 you imagine uh, that you will grow old and you will one day not be able to do everything you used to. So, but then some of the social entrepreneurs, they also said, but it's not a different state. I mean, it's still, you are still the same person. We, 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 we can't even talk about this as if, okay, young, middle-aged, old. It's, it's, it, we are all connected, we are all young, we are all old, you know, even talking about it, it in itself is actually uh, an issue. Um, so, Every time that, 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 that someone said something like with older people feel social isolation, older people want intergenerational relationships, it, it was like a big issue. They did not like that, the other social entrepreneurs. And, and it kind of got under my skin. I, I, I have difficulty actually now. You know when you meet someone that inspires you and they wouldn't say it like that. And so yeah, it, it really, it really uh, I think for me it makes sense not to talk about a generation globally in the whole world as one group. It actually makes no sense. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but a lot of, right now, a lot of the, uh, of, of, of the words and, 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 and what we have is in this mind uh, frame. And I think it's really crazy because it prevents us from thinking more holistically. So if, if we keep doing it, we, we are living in a reality where it's us uh, and, and them. We don't talk about ourselves. Like, we don't have a problem with community or we don't feel social isolation. It's those old people over here. And, and it's, not, it's really not true. I really don't believe it's true. There's also the fact that um, things have changed, like with the dem demography, the way we work and so on. So um, we, don't, we don't know in a couple of years what it's going to look like. And I think we all have difficulty imagining one thing is it's a human basic thing that you can't imagine yourself as a very old person. But I don't think at the same time right now we, we can't even imagine what, that, what the future is like. Um, so so we're very, I think we're very confused and, and maybe a little bit uncertain. And, and I think that, that much younger people feel that as well. Um, they, we, we talk about like AI is going to take over a lot of jobs and so on. I don't know what it's like to be uh, 15, 16 years old and, and then like how do they imagine? What is their kind of life when they are 50 or 60? Um, I think we all agree by now, at least this group of people agreed that the idea that there is childhood, education, work life, retirement, you know, fun times or something, Reading, elf. 
<laughs> it's, not, it's not like that. So, and, and, and this is what really blows my mind, and this is the big question mark right now, and I hope that you can help me. I don't, I don't know how, what we are going, like what is what we are going to be, like what is this all going to look like in, in 20, 30 years. But I think it's important to, um, to, 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 uh, to, to um, somehow be curious about it. And I think it's going to uh, um, change the way that we do cycling without age because it's going to change the way that we see uh, the passengers. Actually, with regards to saying, even saying like the passengers, um, one of those cool uh, Brazilians, he said, he, he didn't like that we call it pilots and passengers. You can imagine, it's a really cool group of people to be with and really exhausting as well. <laughs> um, everything is up for discussion. But he said, why, why, why don't you have the same word? Like, why is it pilot and passenger? It's like, they're all, the, they're all just people. Just don't call them anything. If you have to call them something, you know, use the same word. So I don't know what the next word is. Please help me. <laughs> so they said they could all be co-pilots. I don't know. But I, John has an idea. John. Where's? Exactly. Yes, perfect. Yeah. So these are important things. They're not just words. Um, so Ashoka, through the help of, you know, all of these... Uh, people that participated, uh, they came up with these seven you know, groups of things and, and what we have to talk about. Uh, yeah, so there's been a lot of, of good people thinking a lot and then like this is the conclusion and we're going to discuss it because there are problems <laughs> as well in this diagram, of course. Um, so, um, I was myself uh, I teamed up with the Brazilians a little bit uh, concerned about uh, number four and number five. No, maybe number four mostly, um, because yeah, it's also, we, if we will, if we have to think about, like, if we think about growing older as sort of a, a financial burden on, 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 on the system, because we want to grow older. In order to grow older, we have to spend a lot of money, and then more people will grow old, and then da 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 da. Like it's a whole, it's a very negative way of viewing old age. They also were talking about so the number five organizational. They're going to find a new name for that because people were not happy. It sounds like um, like it's in an organization, like in a business. But the idea was my, more how are things organized. Actually, I think very much where we are, the, the places that we are, are working. Um, it's, it's, it's where, when it says contribution up here, I think that people of all ages, they contribute by being family members, friends, also, of course, working, creating some uh, economical um, situations. But, but if, you, if you don't think about, like, for instance, how many women are depending on an older generation to take care of children so that they can go to work. And you just are like, oh, cool, we have a huge group of people here. And we just send them off to, to the workplace. And then who's going to care for the community? Who's going to care for children? Um, it's, it, there's a lot of invisible uh, work being done out there. And we can't just take people out of, of the existing ecosystem, which is already struggling. Um, so we also had a lot of discussions about voting. Um, are, are, are all people's voices heard when we talk about political parties? Um, you know, what, what the future will look like and so on. Um, uh, all ages made aware of the fact that, that you know, things have changed and we're still using solutions that may, may be applied 30 years ago that could be done for anything 30 years ago, but, but are actually not doing us any good anymore, um, and these kinds of discussions, and then putting them into politics and, 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 and asking people to take a stand on, on issues relating to longevity. Um, there was a group that had a really good idea, I think, um, just a very small idea, but um, asking schools to have a um, intergenerational policy. Yeah, so it, it could be, it doesn't have to be one thing, it also depends on the culture, and depends on the local setting, but but why not have uh, make sure that there are members of the board, for instance, um, who have lived experience 
um, or, or they could be people that come into the school or grandparents being invited into the school, but, but at least make sure that, that the generations get a chance to meet. Uh, do, you, do you have thoughts about these things or questions? What does it, uh, what, what does it make you feel to, to look at a chart like this? Does it make sense? Yes? Okay. okay. I think uh, it's very interesting, and uh, the thought I have is it's uh, perhaps it's also very important to discuss this with uh, the people on age, but all, not only when you are uh, 90 and perhaps sick, uh, yes. but uh, when you are 60 and with the people at the age of 60, 70 to discuss and to talk about this together. Yes, yes, yeah. Natalie? Thank you for bringing this input. And um, my thoughts uh, to this is, how do we apply this very practical locally in our chapters? Yes. And um, one idea we um, started implementing is having a board of advisories of all ages. Um, so our, we still call them passengers, I should think about riding partners. So the riding partners to talk about, do you feel represented in the way we talk about you? Mm -hmm. Do you feel represented on these photos, on these images? Um, how, do you, how do you want this to be? Yes. I think this is very crucial um, and basically, I don't know what um, Amy said, right, Amy, it's your name? Uh, yeah, to have these discussions together and then think about, okay, what are general problems you feel like you have in your day-to-day -day life and how can we be allies to push these because maybe we still have jobs in the municipalities or in companies and make aware of the ageism that happens in the workplaces we are um, and be allies and give you a voice when we are like, when it's about city design and yes. um, how the streets are not made or the places are not made um, for all ages, no? So, um, Absolutely. Yeah. So in Cycling Without Age, we do have an entry into this systematic, because we, we have access to talking to people that where they are directly affected. So it's a good idea. And, and ask policy makers and municipalities, like you said, do you want our expertise? Are you going to do something about it if I'm going to give you my, my, my time? And we can make a big difference. And of course, with, with regards to urban design, one crucial thing is that rather than, than you know, making a ramp so that they can go vote or, or whatever that says, you know, ramp for people in wheelchair and, you know, ramp for old person or something like that, it's just a easy access. We don't have to say, you know, this is for the group that it is meant to be. We are all the same. We all need a ramp at some point. Um, I know I struggle a bit with the economic one as well, yeah. but given my age and people that I hang out with these days, a lot of us are having that conversation because Freedom 55 is not Freedom 55 anymore, right? And there's definitely a cost associated, but on the flip side, it's meaning and purpose. And that's what it, like a lot of our friends are like, now we can pursue our passions. Sometimes we're paid for them, sometimes we're not paid for them. Yes. But I think, um, you know, what hit me in the face was when one of the care home uh, people that I was working with said to me, you know, you retire at 55, you die at 95, that's 40 years. Wow. You're yeah. playing golf for 40, 40 years? years. <laughs> like, I'm not a golfer, I don't no. mean to insult the sport, but yeah. like, what are you gonna do for 40 years? How are you finding meaning and purpose? Yeah. And that really changed my thinking around the economic, around how do I add value back? What do I, you know? Yes. It, both from a, a financial and just from an interest perspective. But we're also seeing some really creative stuff in some of our care homes um, in Canada. And what we're seeing is now um, some of the people with different maybe um, specialties, whether it be you know, music, whether it be cooking, like we're seeing a lot of people that are bringing their recipes. And then they're gonna have like a big Spanish night and they're gonna you know, eat Spanish food. And, and you can see those people coming together in the care homes and it's, 
it's the seniors themselves that are bringing that forward. They're hosting cooking classes. Let's all make pierogies, and they make pierogies one night and stuff like that. So we're starting to see that kind of back to your conversation about how do we contribute, yeah. right? Yes. And I think it is a beautiful thing, and I think it can be tough conversations, but I think it also, to your point, in trying to shift people's thinking, I, I think there are some people there, and I really hope that flywheel gets going. I think it's great work you're doing. Thanks. Yeah, and I think uh, we often have uh, the division between younger and elder, elder people because we are the young, younger ones <laughs> a little bit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on, on the saddle and the others are a little bit older. But we often have the problem, you see them once and then you don't see them anymore, but you see how many problems they have. For example, I had a man in my age and he lived for one and a half year in, in his uh, rooms without coming out yeah. and then you drove him once and now he is in the same situation than before and i think this is will be a big problem and we for him it's too late because he he should have done things 40 years earlier and so i think this is a problem for us too to see that we are not uh, in th three groups youth uh, working situation and the a situation after work, but we have to uh, sign some things between these three groups that's mm -hmm. easier to, to uh, survive w without uh, isolation. So true, and and I really I really have learned through this course that it's def there, there it is a systemic. So I mean, a lot of people will also say that we can do something now, like live healthily, like be strong and be you know. We're, but it, that's on the individual level. That's fine, you know, we can, we can make our, the best to live a healthy life, but if the system is pushing you to, to be alone in old age, a lot more people will be alone. Not everybody, maybe not anyone in this room, but a lot will be. Um, and so some of the things that we also talked about is that this idea that we, that we have a lot to contribute with in, in old age and that we, and that we should uh, really um, cherish that. There are also a lot of people who, who don't have the luxury of doing something meaningful in old age or, or being heard. Um, yeah, so I think we, I think, you know, we are doing, it's an amazing uh, organization. We are, uh, you are absolutely doing something so crazy and so good. But let's also, you know, think about how to include those people that don't have access to rights. Um, I know a lot of you guys are doing it, but like other communities, minorities, and, and make sure to, to include as many ages as possible to push the system to think more holistically. So I'm going to leave you with a recommendation of a book. And this is not, um, this is fiction. So for once it's not, uh, what, have, have any of you read it? Okay. I absolutely love this book. And um, it is... Yeah, it's, it, I wanted this picture, big, that's just the, the, the front page of, of the book, but it, it uh, mirrors the Viking uh, village. Um, and, and I can't tell you but exactly, but it's, a, it's an Icelandic woman who decides to, uh, to, to first grow her own community and, and then make a change from there. And, and it's really beautiful. And I think it's going to help you see things more clearly and not be too hard on yourself if you can't, you know, change the whole world. You can do it one person at a time. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>